why do I have the feeling that most gay guys have a camping story? Um, Brad, you asked me for one, and I don't know if I quite have its campish sort of a story. I'll get into it, but give me a like while the intro plays. <laughs> I told you this was gonna be too cool. But I guess. Okay, so it wasn't until very recent that I got into camping. And so now that I'm like old and decrepit, <laughs> I don't have any camping like spicy stories because um, for me, I just really use camping as a way to kind of decompress and disconnect from society and uh, just kind of be at one with nature. So like all of the boring stuff, right? <laughs> the most exciting thing that's ever happened camping was I had a friend who brought like this huge bottle of vodka, I, I believe. And so we just had drink after drink after drink like I was toasted I remember like stumbling back to my tent I remember having to wake up to pee in the middle of the night so I leave the tent and then it hours later I wake up the next morning and I look like this Aww. I don't really remember what happened <laughs> but that's kind of been like the craziest thing when it comes to like camping but the closest thing that I could think of that is a little spicy, a little campy, something like that. But in New York, we would, um, a lot of kids would just like, we would camp on the fire escape and I'll show you a picture of my building. But yeah, we would just kind of bring out blankets and pillows and just sleep on the fire escape. It was a great way to kind of beat the heat of the apartment during the summertime. And so uh, this one time, I think I was maybe like the last time I did that, maybe 16 and um, I've mentioned this guy uh, in one of my uh, experimented with the neighborhood boys story, but uh, this guy, we will call him J.R. Now, one of the things that, that ex with experimenting with these, these guys is that that's all that it was really, was experimentation. And so it was a lot of, hey, let's play truth or dare. Hey, let's have fun and do something crazy. Like it was very much um, spur of the moment kind of situations nothing planned nothing really that defined our sexuality i don't think it was just being boys and experimenting but with jr it was a little bit different i um i don't know he was he was first off he was i think we were the same he was the closest to my age like we were about the same age but the other thing is that um i i kind of felt for him like i i, I because as tough as my childhood was, his was just as tough and in some ways even worse because at least I could say that my parents were still like concerned with my whereabouts. You know, he was the type of dude where he could just like go out and be out all day, all night and his parents didn't really check on him in that way. And so I know that affected him. Um, and I think because we had a lot of other things in common, he really, was starting to gravitate towards me. Um, this one day, <laughs> gosh, okay, here comes a little spice. I'm gonna sprinkle some spice here. But uh, my parents, like once a month, they would go shopping in New Jersey, like in, like big bulk shopping. And so this day they go shopping. So I knew they would be gone for a while. It's just me and JR in my apartment. And so it starts off that whole same thing like hey let's experiment let's do this hey why don't we try this and this was the time where like we really were trying to go all the way but again being inexperienced and not quite quite knowing what to do it was like dry on dry action and so some of y'all not out there know how that it's super difficult right <laughs> but we like we're trying to make things work and and of course we're nervous about my parents coming home so we kind of had this thing to where he's looking out of the window and then i'm right behind him we're both looking out the window and still trying to make things happen if you know what i mean um, but both on the lookout so right when things started to happen sure enough here comes the car around the corner and we're like darn it so <laughs> oh uh, you know, that we go downstairs to help my parents bring up the groceries. And um, I think my parents really liked him. He was a good, decent kid. They normally wouldn't, didn't want other kids in the apartment, but they were cool with him. So we hang out the entire day together. Uh, talk. I talk about, hey, why don't we, I should go fire escape camping, you know? Um, and so I set everything up outside. It's getting dark at this point. 
and um, you know, no sleepovers were allowed, but it was kind of like, I remember my stepmom saying, hey, you know, don't stay out there, you know, the, the, telling JR, don't stay out there too late, you have to go home at some point. He's like, okay, cool. So we're out there, parents go to their room and we can see their bedroom light from the fire escape. So we're just both like um, waiting, <laughs> you know, we're like waiting for that light to go off and eventually it, it did. And so now it's just me and him. It's dark outside. I don't remember what time it was, but it was super late. Like all, everything was shut down. Everyone was gone. And it's he and I on this fire escape. And I remember like him saying, can I lay down next to you? So I'm like, yeah, sure. So he comes down, we're like both laying down next to each other, just talking about what had happened, what we had done earlier. And so um, I look over and I can see where like he's tenting the blanket. So, you know, we're, again, we're just playing this, this thing of, oh my gosh, really look at you. And I'm just like poking at it. And, you know, it's, it's a whole jokey joke kind of thing. But then he's like, do you want to continue? And I'm like, yeah, you know, so we kind of started doing stuff under the blanket uh, and we were trying again. I, again, I think I was too nervous to actually, we were both nervous to, and just what would actually happen and being so nervous that anyone else from the other apartments would look down and see, know what we were doing. And so it was, you know, it was so much easier to go to like first base, second base. I don't, again, I don't even know what the bases are, but, but no home run, <laughs> like we didn't go all the way because of that fear that we would get caught. So that's, yeah, out of any, that's the campy-ish story that I have that, that has a little spice to it. Um, not anything crazy, but yeah, that was, um, it was actually a sweet moment. I liked JR and as I mentioned before, that was also around the time where I just thought I'm just gonna leave all the neighborhood kids alone, alone and just focus on making my friendships in high school. So. A, our friendship was a casualty of other things that had happened because I just disconnected from everyone. Um, but he was a nice guy and um, I, I hope he's doing well. I hope he's happy now. That's my story. I hope you guys liked it. As always, like would be great. A subscribe would be even better. But most importantly, comment. Um, again, I'm sure that I'm probably the only gay dude in America who does not have a formal camping story. And so all of y'all do. And gals too, by the way. So I want to hear those stories. Tell me your camping stories. I know you have them. Bye.